this video, we will be going over a custom setup in the Drive Rack Venue 360. If your speakers and amps do not appear in the Venue 360's list, you will need to do a custom setup to use it to the full extent. First, connect the main outputs of your mixer to the analog inputs 1 and 2 of the Drive Rack. Connect your aux send to the analog 3 input if you're running monitors. Then connect the high outputs to your high amps, or high speakers if they're powered. Connect the mid outputs to your mid amps, or mid speakers if they're powered. Then connect the low outputs to your low amps, or directly to powered subs. If you're only using two mains with two subs, then you'll want to connect your main speakers to the high outputs of the Drive Rack Venue 360. After you've connected the Drive Rack to your amps and speakers, you're ready to continue with the custom setup. There are three options for setting up. You can choose an empty preset by pressing the Preset Recall button and scrolling down to Empty Preset 26. Press Select to load an empty preset, and press Config to manually configure your setup. You can also choose a pre-configured preset or go through the Setup Wizard. Presets will give you a great place to start. Pressing the Preset Recall button will take you to the Preset menu. From there, you can choose the starting point for your application. Presets 1 through 25 will show you basic setup information. You'll have choices from stereo full range mains to left center and right mains. The presets will also include stage monitor setups. Choose the application that best fits your setup by pressing the select knob. We'll select four stereo mains with a mono sub, so we can save the last output for monitors. On the left-hand side of the diagram, you'll see the left and right stereo inputs, the monitor input, and the left and right highs, left and right mids, mono low, and the monitor output on the right. Press the edit button to make changes. Notice mix 1 defaults to analog input 1 at 0 dB, mix 2 defaults to analog input 2 at 0 dB, and mix 3 defaults to analog input 3 at 0 dB. You'll also want to notice that A and B are feeding outputs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, whereas output C is not feeding anything. While in edit mode, use the select wheel to scroll over to the mixer for output 6 and press select. This will allow you to increase the gain for C so that the monitors will send signal on output 6. Click back to exit the mix window. Now we'll show you how to set up a configuration through the wizard option. Press the wizard button to start. Scroll down to Run System Setup Wizard and press Select. Press Select to continue and choose Yes to start from default settings. For this example, we're going to be running mains and monitors, so we'll choose PA System plus Stage Monitors. Select Mono, Stereo, or LCR depending on your application. We'll choose Stereo for this example. Select your left input, which is Analog 1 for this example, and select your right input. We'll choose Analog 2. It will then ask you to select the main speaker brand. We'll choose JBL for this example. This is where you would select the main speaker model, but since our speaker isn't included in the list, we'll choose Not Listed. If you'll be running one set of mains with subs, then choose Full Range. If you're biamping or running highs and mids with subs, then choose Buy Amp. Choose Yes if you're using subs. If you'll be sending an aux output to your subs, choose Yes for aux fed, or No if you're running subs from the main left and right outputs. Choose Mono or Stereo depending on your application. We'll choose Mono for this example. Our subs are also JBL, but they're not included in the model list, so we'll choose Not Listed again. Next, we'll be selecting the amplifiers. Ours aren't listed, so we'll choose that option for highs, mids, and lows. If you're using powered speakers, then choose Not Listed as well. It will then ask you to select your monitor speakers. Ours are JBL, but they're not listed, so we'll choose that option. We'll choose Not Listed for the amp as well. Since we've already used Analog 1 and 2, we'll select Analog Input 3 for our monitors. If you'd like to use Feedback Suppression for your monitors, then select Yes. Select Yes one more time to apply the changes. It will then show you how to connect the inputs and outputs to the Venue 360. Press Select to complete the setup. 
Press the back button to see the configuration you just made. In order to set the crossover correctly for each speaker, you'll need to be in edit mode in the crossover menu. You'll also need to know what frequencies your speakers can reproduce. This can usually be found in the spec sheet for the specific speaker you're using. For example, we're using high speakers that are able to reproduce frequencies that are 2 kHz and above. We are going to set the high pass frequency for our high driver to 3 kHz. With a steep roll off down to around 2 kHz. Our mid speakers are able to reproduce frequencies from 250 Hz to 2 kHz. We'll set the mid low pass frequency to 2 kHz. And the high pass frequency to 250 Hz. Our subs are able to reproduce frequencies from 40 Hz to 250 kHz. So we'll leave the low pass at the default, which is 100 kHz, with a semi-steep roll-off. And set the high pass frequency to 40 Hz. With a steep roll-off. If your speakers are powered, you can simply send full range signal to each of them and let the internal crossover on the speaker do the work. The PEQ menu can also be adjusted for specific speaker types and can be accessed by pressing the edit button and choosing the PEQ menu for highs, mids, or lows. PEQ specifications can sometimes be found in the speaker spec sheet as well. Here's an example of what PEQ may look like. In this example, EQ1 would be set to bell. at a frequency of 2.73 kHz. Attenuated by minus 6 dB. With a bandwidth of 0.3. EQ2 would be set to high shelf. at a frequency of 9.84 kHz. Increased by 8 dB. EQ3 would be set to bell. At a frequency of 4.75 kHz. attenuated by minus 2.5 dB. With a bandwidth of 0.2. EQ4 would be set to bell. At a frequency of 11.3 kHz. attenuated by minus 3 dB. With a bandwidth of 0.4. This would be done for each output that requires PEQ settings. If you're unable to find crossover or PEQ settings in the spec sheet, then you'll need to contact the speaker manufacturer to obtain them. Before running any other wizards, you'll want to set up your gain structure, which includes setting the limiters of the Venue 360, which can be found in edit mode by selecting the limiter. For information on how to set up your gain structure, please click on the link in the description below. After you've set up your gain structure and made sure the system is balanced, you're ready to run the auto EQ. You'll want to skip the level assistant since you've already set up the gain structure manually for your custom speakers and amps. Click the wizard button and select Run Auto EQ Level Assistant.
choose the EQ you want to set up first. We'll start with the mains. This menu will allow you to run the audio EQ by itself. Choose recommended curve. Connect your RTA microphone and place it in between your speakers like the display shows. Then press select. It will set the test tone level. When that's finished, choose 3 for the RTA mic measurements. Keep the mic in the middle of your speakers and press select for mic position 1. Move the mic as shown on the display and press select for mic position 2. Move the mic one last time and press select for mic position 3. will then calculate the auto EQ settings and display the changes it has made. Press select to finish. Select yes to run the auto EQ for your monitors. Choose the correct auto EQ and press select. Choose Recommended Curve. Connect your RTA microphone and place it in front of your monitor speaker like the display shows. Then press Select. It will set the test tone level. When that's finished, choose 3 for the RTA mic measurements. Keep the mic in front of your speaker and press select for mic position 1. Move the mic as shown on the display and press select for mic position 2. Move the mic one last time and press select for mic position 3. will then calculate the auto EQ settings and display the changes it has made. Press select to continue and choose no when it asks you if you would like to EQ another system. The AFS will eliminate any feedback you may encounter. To run the AFS, select the wizard button and choose Run AFS Wizard. We'll run the AFS for the main speakers first. It will ask you to perform a sound check with all of your microphones on stage. After you've completed that rough sound check, press Select, bypass any active noise gates and press Select again. Lower your master faders completely and press Select. You can choose No to select a specific number of filters, or use the default, which is 6. For this example, we'll use the default. Choose your AFS filter type. We'll be using Music and Speech. Slowly raise your master faders, and you'll hear the speaker begin to feed back. mixer's output to the correct performance level and press select. Press select one last time to exit the AFS wizard. Select yes to run the AFS for your monitors and choose the appropriate AFS. It will ask you to perform a sound check with all of your microphones on stage. After you've completed that rough sound check, press select. Bypass any active noise gates and press select again. Lower your master faders completely and press select. You can choose No to select a specific number of filters, or use the default, which is 6. For this example, we'll use the default. Choose your AFS filter type. We'll be using Music and Speech. Slowly raise your master faders, and you'll hear the speaker begin to feed back.
Lower your mixer's output to the correct performance level and press select. Press select one last time to exit the AFS wizard. Select no when it asks you if you'd like to set up another AFS. Click back to exit. You're now ready to run your system with the DriveRack Venue 360. If you have any questions, please visit www.dbxpro.com.